from the liner. Little oil marks are there. So I will clean it. Uh, you can see this is your liner. Huh? This is your liner, and this is your scavenge port, and this is your scavenge area. This is your scavenge area, and you can see this entire thing is your scavenge area receiver. This is your scavenge area receiver. You can see. Uh, here it is uh, very clean because we just cleaned uh, this uh, scavenge space area and the scavenge receiver. You can see it is uh, very nice and clean. No sludge, nothing inside. Okay. Okay. Uh, one important thing before uh, doing the inspection always the one who is doing the inspection should use the remote. Uh, we should not do the mistake of uh, asking the other guy to operate the remote and uh, the guy who is doing the inspection should be with free of hand. No, you have to operate by yourself and you have to do the inspection by yourself. The reason is lot of accidents had happened uh, earlier. Uh, people used to ask other to do the uh, remote operation and the guy who is doing the operation doesn't know what is the engineer who is doing the inspection is doing. So whenever we do the inspection, you ensure you are operating the remote so that in case of any emergency you can stop. So if you are asking others to do the operation of remote, we don't know what the, you are doing and uh, it may end up in some sort of accident. inspection for uh, number 7 unit. So before doing the inspection, we can have a look inspection on outside of the liner, whether uh, there is any abnormal deposits of sludge and everything. So nothing abnormal, you can see. Liner is also clear and you can see the uh, scavenge area is also clean. So that means no abnormality and you can see the this is your uh, stuffing box service, stuffing box area and stuffing box area is also, there is no abnormal in that area, okay. So this is your piston rod, piston rod is in good condition only and uh, from here only you can see the liner surface, liner uh, surface mark and if you see, uh, you can uh, very well see the awning mark you can see the awning mark awning mark is visible and uh, what else? you can see the awning mark is clearly visible there is no abnormal stuffing mark and everything so I will bring down the you can see here also you can see the this is your uh, piston rod this is your piston rod ok I will bring down the piston rod. Stop. Okay. Uh, now this is your uh, piston skirt. Always when you are doing any scavenge inspection piston ring inspection ensure your blue oil pump is running. So here we can find out whether the blue oil leakage is there or not because if any blue oil leakage is there then that means it indicates your o-ring between the crown and uh, skirt is damaged. So you have to redeem it. But now you can see here there is no any leakage of uh, blue oil. It is all very clear. And also when you are doing inspection under in the skirt side, you can see here uh, all these uh, wires. Wires should be in place, in place. it should not be uh, uh, hanging around. And uh, the purpose of uh, tying both the bolts with wire is in case if any one of the bolts got sheared off or got loose and uh, if it fall down, it don't fall down the crankies and the damage any other parts, it will be hanging. That only. That is the purpose of having a, a bolts wired within each other. 
So inside you got all those bolts. Those bolts are hydraulically tightened, so no problem in it. But uh, these bolts are torque tor tightened, so sometimes there are chances for uh, this bolt getting shed off. So for uh, safety reasons, this wire was uh, tied between two bolts. So this is additional information, and uh, I will bring the skirt down. You can see this is your skirt and uh, you can hear the noise because uh, this noise is the piston covering your uh, scavenge port when it covers it gives the noise so you can see the piston ring uh, see this piston ring is H5 type this uh, piston ring uh, is called as H5 piston ring and uh, this piston ring is chromium metal this piston ring is made up of chromium metal and it got two layers you can see yellow color golden color layer this is your aluminium layer and you can see this is your uh, ceramic layer that is your ceramic ceramic coating so this piston ring is made of uh, three one is your uh, chromium that is main metal and the second layer will be your ceramic coating that is a ceramic coating and third will be your aluminium coating so it got three layers so the first layer will be your aluminium coating when this aluminium coating goes away you can see here you can see you can uh, see the mark the aluminium uh, the gold coating is almost out and uh, aluminium coating is under picture now it's coming to picture so this aluminium coating is your ceramic nothing but a ceramic this is like a ceramic stone where this provides you uh, a yeah, rubbing effect it does not allow the metal to metal contact yeah, this uh, what do you call that uh, this ceramic coating will never allow the metal to metal move and they don't uh, lead to any scuffing work or something so if this metal is gone then that means chromium is directly exposed to your liner and it will get metal to metal contact that will lead to your scuffing, liner scuffing and everything. So always when you are doing the inspection for this kind of uh, this kind of piston rings you have to use a helco meter. This is your helco meter and uh, you can see, uh, see this is your helco meter. So this is useful to find how much is the thickness of your coating? Suppose, yeah, I will show you. Huh? See, this is your, yeah. So, for this, if attach, the coating is 641. For the second is 691. For the first is 528. You can see the variation. Huh? If the, if it is full gold color, you can see the thickness it is showing 641. And for the first, the gold color is already gone and uh, the first is already uh, gold. If it is gold, it is showing 641 and see here it is already gone. Eh? So I check the measurement, it is showing 529. So this is how you can measure the thickness of your uh, aluminum ceramic coating and once the reading comes below 100, then that is the time you are uh, ready to change your piston rings. So once the value comes down 100, then okay, uh, you change your piston ring. Because uh, if it is the coating thickness is less than 100 micron, then very soon it will be out and uh, chromium will be exposed and it will be directly come in contact with your uh, liner that leads to your stopping effect. And one more thing that you need to see during your uh, piston ring inspection, you have to see whether there is any micro seizure or not. But here there is no micro seizure. If there is any micro seizure, you can find like dot 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 dot. So that if you find like that uh, micro seizures, uh, you can uh, increase uh, cylinder oil lubrication. So you have to increase, and on the next inspection, you have to check again whether the micro seizure is there or not. If the micro seizure is no more, then you have to put back the cylinder oil lubrication to normal condition. You cannot keep running with high, high cylinder oil uh, feeding.
Okay, now we will check the piston ring clearances. So I will be using this feeler gauge. So for each and everything, everything I will take the clearance. So yeah. So I will take here. This is how we need to take the clearance between the group and the piston ring. So just you have to match which uh, filler gauge is going. So accordingly you have to check your clearance between your uh, piston ring group and piston ring. So just insert is it should go smoothly nicely. It should not be any uh, obstruction. So it's going smoothly. Here also going smooth. Here also it is not going smooth. So yeah, going smooth. Okay. So for all three, it is going okay. So this is the reading you have to. Now it is showing 0 0.013. So I will note it in my reading. So this is how you have to take the um, piston group clearance with the piston ring. So then you have to take the movement of your piston ring. You can see the oil coming out here. You can see when I push up and I take to TDC the oil is coming up that means your piston ring movement is in a good condition piston ring movement is in a good condition so you can check this way also the movement of your piston ring if not you can use a uh, any screwdriver but for this kind of uh, uh, for this kind of piston ring no need to use of screwdriver just you give a movement uh, TDC and uh, VDC just up and down the oil whichever remaining between the group will come out that means you can see the oil coming out does see you can see the oil coming out that means uh, the piston ring movement is okay piston is not stuck is not broken nothing and okay I will bring it down you will see the piston top You can see yeah, the piston top will be always uh, dry. You can see here, it should be always dry. This indicates that your uh, fuel injectors are okay and uh, your fuel is also okay, combustion is also okay. So, see, you can see a complete dry on piston top land. Okay, now we can see the top portion, uh, top portion of your uh, uh, piston, this is your uh, combustion area, combustion area, you can see some fuel, that is okay, no problem, and you can see the uh, liner marks, this is your honing marks are still visible, there is no any abnormal, uh, there is no any abnormal stuffing marks in the liner, Liner is still uh, in a very good condition. You can see, you can see the visible morning box. So you can see, yeah, that is your, uh, that is your exhaust valve spindle. No much carbon deposit in it. Okay. So yeah, we are done with our uh, piston ring inspection. Okay, then all we need to check is the condition of your relief valve. Well, this is your uh, scavenge, yeah, this is your relief valve. Well. Okay, good, nothing. See, the pin is still there, no loose of bolts, it's in a good condition. And next, we need to check is your. Uh, yeah, this is your flaps. This is your flaps. Flaps for your scavenge uh, uh, accident board flaps. See, if I open, it should fall by itself. This is how we check the uh, flaps. 
If I open, it should drop. Right, sir. If it gets stuck or uh, if it is not closing properly, then that means this flap is ready to change. And the uh, other thing you can see from here, if there is any abnormalities. You can see the impeller, axillary blower impeller. You can see here. Uh, there is. Uh, it's a new uh, overall uh, blower, so it is already examined. But still, when you are doing any inspection, you have to look at the blower, axillary blower impeller. There should not be any abnormal oil deposits inside it, and there should you can see visual visual inspection. Uh, it is good, no problem. And we have to check this for all the units. For all the units, we have to remove drop, remove drop. That means this is okay. All everything is okay. So I will check for all. So we have to do the checking for this flap. This is how we check the uh, scavenge air flap. see this sensor this is your temperature sensor and this temperature sensor should be free of any sludge so whenever you do cleaning you have to ensure this uh, temperature sensor is free of uh, sludge or anything and you can see the indication in the door uh, see it's a enclosed space this is the enclosed space so always uh, scavenge space should be considered as a enclosed space area so you don't Okay. I've given you enough information, at least some basic information of uh, what all checks that you need to do during your visiting inspection and uh, what all things you should do before conducting your uh, visiting inspection. Any visiting inspection, you have to always comply with your safety, always carry your uh, oxygen meter, always ensure your entro space permit is completely done. Always keep the communication with the person who is outside your uh, scavenge space. And I believe this video is okay for you. I think you like this video. If you like, like, share and subscribe. Finally, finally after completing your uh, inspection, you ensure nothing is left inside your scavenge receiver. And no one is inside the scavenge receiver. Then close it immediately and you can put back the system to the normal. So now I check everything. Nothing inside, no one inside, nothing inside, no one inside. So I close the I close the door.